Hello everyone. So for this video, we're going to be looking at the eukaryotic cell cycle and mitosis. Um, so in eukaryotic cells compared to prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells have a very complicated um, chromosome uh, system. Uh, eukaryotic cells have many more genes and DNA than prokaryotic cells and they are grouped into multiple chromosomes in the nucleus. Each eukaryotic chromosome contains one long DNA molecule. Um, so individual chromosomes are visible under the microscope only when the cell is in the process of dividing. Um, so right before a cell will divide and undergo mitosis, do the DNA the, become more compact in the form called chromosomes. Um, uh, uh, if they're not undergoing or preparing for cell division, this, the DNA will be in thin, loosely packed um, fibers called chromatin that are way too small to see with the naked eye or really with um, a microscope. Um, you have to have a very powerful, very good microscope to even tell the difference uh, at that point. So before a cell starts dividing, the chromosomes duplicate um, producing what they call sister chromatids, which is identical uh, DNA copy. They are joined together along uh, their lengths. Um, the sister chromatids are joined by uh, an area called the centromere, and I'll show you that in a second. So cell division involves the separation of sister chromatids, which results in two daughter cells, each containing a complete identical set of chromosomes. So the goal of cell division um, is to create a copy, to create an identical copy. You want that cell to be able to do the same job that you're doing. You don't wanna create anything different or unique. That will come up later um, in this um, PowerPoint. So this here is, if I can remember, a lily cell um, and these are the chromosomes. And you can see that they are becoming, they're starting, you actually can see them, they're, if you can see them, um, what I always used to call the, the brain and image kind of reminds me of a, a brain. But um, these are the chromosomes that are now becoming compact where you actually can see the different chromosomes themselves. So this here, this very large structure here is the nucleus of this lily cell. So let's review terminology. So there's different ways of visualizing this. Um, so you have chromosomes. So this is what generally the structure of a chromosome in a picture format or a diagram. And here is the DNA molecule representation of a chromosome. These chromosomes, all the DNA chromosomes, um, have to be replicated for cell division. You have to create a copy. Once you create those copies, you still have a chromosome, but they're now in the form of sister chromatids. So each one represents um, an identical chromosome, uh, which you can see here in the chromosomal DNA molecules. Once you undergo mitosis, these will be separated. So these two sister chromatids will separate in two different separate cells. And so they would then be identical um, daughter cells of the parent chromosome. This is, the, this is a um, transmission electron microscope of a sister chromatid showing you these are the, the actual DNA molecules um, compact here. They are the sister chromatids are connected at a spot called the centromere. Um, the centromere is just a region where these two DNA um, copies, these two sister copies of the chromatids will be um, connected together. So the centromere is just a spot where they actually just attach to each other and can be held together. So let's talk about the cell cycle. The cell cycle is an ordered sequence of events 
that runs from the time a cell is first formed from the dividing parent cell into its own division of two daughter cells. So let's look at, this is the cell cycle in a, um, a visual format. So cells, let's start here at the, um, when a cell is first created at the end of mitosis. So a new cell has been created. Two, two um, daughter cells here have been created. So we're gonna look at one of them. So that daughter cell is now fully independent um, and it will enter into what we call interphase. So a cell will spend most of its life in interphase. Interphase is a very long part of its life. The only other part that's not in interphase is mitosis, the mitotic phase. So cells will spend most of their life in interphase. However, interphase can be divided into different uh, stages. There's the G1, S, and G2 stages. G1, or the first gap, or what I like to call the first growth stage, so the first growth stage is when a new cell will actually start to grow and get larger and it will undergo the normal functions that it is um, uh, been programmed to do. So if it is a muscle cell, it will be a muscle cell. If it's a, um, a skin cell, it will be a skin cell and it will grow and do its normal cellular function. Once the cell has then reached a, 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 a part, a point in its life um, where it is now or needed to, um, and grown enough where it's able to uh, undergo synthesis, uh, will it then reach the S phase? S stands for DNA synthesis. So during synthesis, the cell will continue to grow but most of its energy will then be put into uh, synthesis of the DNA molecule. So during the S stage, uh, the DNA of the cell is copied. And that takes a lot of energy. DNA, um, the DNA molecules, um, the different chromosomes are very long, thousands upon thousands of nucleotides in length. And they have to be built in the correct order they, they, you know, almost perfect. You can't mess up the DNA molecule because if you, can, if you mess up your DNA molecules, then something bad can happen. So S phase takes a long time. Um, you can see it takes about half of the cell's life um, will it spend in S phase creating new DNA um, uh, copies to prepare for mitosis. So once the DNA, um, molecules have been copied, will you then enter into G2 or the second growth phase? And so this is growth two, where a cell will continue to get larger, um, but more importantly, it will copy other and create other organelles that are needed for a new cell um, when it starts to split in mitosis. So if you need a Golgi apparatus, this is where you will create a Golgi apparatus. Um, if you need extra mitochondria, this is where you will start to create a lot of extra mitochondria. Um, and this is just to prepare for the last phase of its life, um, which is mitosis. And then during mitosis, the cell will divide in two equally, create two identical daughter cells, and then we, you can start this process all over again. So cell division is a continuous um, change um, from a singular uh, nucleus to a copy of that, that, and then the cell will split apart. So mitosis distributes duplicated chromosomes into two daughter nuclei. After the chromosomes are coiled up, a mitotic spindle um, which is made of microtubules, moves the chromosomes to the middle of the cell. 
and I'm going to review the monomitotic spindle is in a second. The sister chromatids then separate and move to opposite poles of the cell, at which point two new nuclei um, can form. So let's look at that in um, picture format. The first part here is interface. Interface, remember what you just covered in the cell cycle, is not part of mitosis, it's where the cell spends most of its life. At the end of the growth two phase um, stage of interface, um, is the cell fully ready to then undergo mitosis. So you have a nucleus here um, where you have all the chromosomes, uh, the chromatin, it's not in a condensed format, um, but all the DNA here has been copied already. So all the DNA has been copied, it's just not condensed yet. And then you have centrosomes um, that will form the uh, mitotic um, spindle. And mitotic spindle are microtubules that really I always think of it as like lane, like car lanes that will help direct the um, chromosomes as they are um, being split apart. So the first phase of mitosis is prophase. Pro means before, so this is the prophase. It's the first phase. In prophase, the one thing you should definitely notice is that the DNA has gone from a chromatin state to chromosomes. Uh, and the chromosomes are sister chromatids. Um, so you have two copies of each uh, chromosome uh, present here. And they're attached to the centromere. You can notice the centrosomes are growing the mitotic spindle to prepare um, for the um, chromosomes to uh, separate them. Another thing that happens during prophase is that the nuclear envelope here, uh, the nuclear envelope that, that in houses the DNA has to break apart. So the nuclear envelope will break apart and start to disappear, which then we move into prometaphase. Prometaphase is right before the middle of um, mitosis. So in prometaphase, you'll notice that the nuclear envelope has completely dissolved and broken free, and those chromosomes are now able to um, start to line up in the middle of the cell with the um, spindles, fibers here, uh, aligning up so that they can guide these chromosomes to the different sides. That leads us to the third phase here of mitosis, which is metaphase. Metaphase is the middle <laughs> of um, mitosis. Um, so one way you can remember metaphase is the middle and that the chromosomes themselves line up in the middle of the cell. They line up on the metaphase plate, which literally is the middle um, of the cell. It's an equal distribution between the uh, centrosomes here. So those spindles, those mitotic spindles here have attached to the um, centromere of the chromosomes. They will attach there so that they can then pull those cystochromatids apart. And that leads us to anaphase. An easy way to remember anaphase is that the chromosomes are being pulled apart. Um, so A for apart. So the, the chromosomes will be pulled to the two different poles, the two different sides of the cells. And you, they're being pulled by those um, spindle fibers. They're like, like I said, I, I always think of them as like little roadways for the chromosomes to travel along. That leads us to the last phase, which is telophase. Now telophase goes hand in hand with cytokinesis, which I'm gonna talk about cytokinesis more in a minute, but right now I'm just going to focus on telophase. Telophase is the complete separation of the um, cystochromatids and the reformation of the nuclear envelope. So you can see the nuclear envelope is starting to reform around uh, this DNA. 
and the DNA is slowly starting to unwind and, and become uh, not a chromosome, uh, but more into the chromatid form, um, not chromatid, um, chromatin form of the DNA, the more um, stringy-like form. So uh, it's, and then the, the DNA here has completely separated. And so for all intents and purposes, you now have two daughter um, cells that are identical um, to the parent cell that was formed. Now, cytokinesis also goes along with telophase. Telophase, that word telophase, is looking at the DNA molecules. What is happening to the DNA of the cells? So in telophase here, the DNA has fully separated. Um, the two sets of sister chromatids are fully separated and the nuclear envelope is starting to reform around that DNA. That's telophase. It goes along with cytokinesis, which is the actual separation of the cells. Um, it's where the cell will completely divide in two. And depending on if you are an animal or a plant, there's different ways that cytokinesis occurs. Um, if it's in an animal cell, it undergoes what we call cle a cleavage furrow. And if it's a plant cell, then you have to have a cell plate to form to split those cells in two. So let's look at those examples. So this is cytokinesis of an animal cell, which has to undergo a cleavage furrow. And I like to think of a cleavage furrow as like literally you're pinching a cell into two parts. It will form um, on one side once the two, um, the nuclei have separated at the end of telophase, and then it will literally pinch itself apart uh, to separate into two daughter cells. Now that's different compared to animal um, plant cells, which have to build a cell plate. Plant cells, remember, have very thick cell walls and they're not able to move or pinch themselves apart. So what do they do? <laughs> they build a wall. <laughs> so they build a wall, a cell wall, to separate the two cells to create two new um, daughter cells. So it's a, it's a, which is a little bit of a longer process, but um, the cell will do it and it, it works. They're able to then become two separate daughter cells and grow into two, two different um, uh, individual cells that can have different functions. Now there are videos where you can actually look at that um, occurring. Um, so the rate of cellular vision is affected by environmental factors. So when scientists were first studying cell division, they noticed that in laboratory cultures, if you just put a cell into a, um, take some samples of cells and put them in a cell play, a play, a culture play, they realized that they weren't caught, they, you couldn't get them to divide. They would just sit there and then eventually they would die. Um, So most cells will um, divide only when attached to um, a surface and they will divide until they touch another cell. Most animal cells divide only when stimulated by growth factors and some do not divide at all. So growth factors stimulate cells to divide. So if you was to take some samples of, uh, of cells and put them in a plate and use to give them a growth factor, give them a, a signal to grow, then they would start to divide until they feel that um, a single layer of cells. And then if you was to remove some cells, um, then they would tell, you know, they would get the signal to, we need to fill in this gap and you would have another single layer of cells by single cell cell division. So um, this is normal cellular function.
However, we have learned over time that cancer cells do not follow this normal cellular function. Cancer cells will continue to divide. There is no contact inhibition in cancer cells. So in normal cells, there is contact inhibition. When they come into contact with each other and they form a single surface or a single layer, um, and if, if there's no growth factors to tell them to keep growing, then they will stop growing. They, that's normal cell um, division, but cancer cells are not like that. And then here is um, the growth factor, which I was telling you, if you put just cells in a, in a cell culture and without anything there, they would literally just fail to divide. They would just sit there and then eventually die once they run out of nutrients. However, if you add a growth factor to those cells, um, which is a signaling saying, hey, you can divide, then they will start to multiply and grow. So this has led to the discovery of what we call the checkpoint system. Um, so there are checkpoints in the cell cycle. Um, there are growth factors that signal cells to um, check to make sure that they can undergo cell division. So there are a set of proteins within the cell controls of the cell cycle. There are signals that affect cell division um, and they are critical checkpoints for cell division, which I'll explain why in a second. Um, so growth factor, some sort of signaling is important. Um, to determine if a cell will undergo different types of, um, if they will undergo cell division. So let's look at these checkpoints. So there is, this is interphase, which you have your growth one um, stage here. Some cells will get stuck in this first growth, um, growth stage. And we call those cells that go into G0. They are literally stuck in the first growth phase. They will never ever go into S for synthesis. There are some cells in the body um, that are, will never do this. Um, for example, most of your nerve cells are in G0. Your nerve cells cannot be replicated. So this is why they say if you do something to, to damage your nerve cells, um, once you lose them, they are gone um, for the most part. There's other cells in the body that also do this. There are some muscle cells that are stuck in G0. There are some bone cells stuck in um, G0. Um, there are just some cells of the body that literally their whole purpose is to stay there for growth and maintenance, not to undergo DNA synthesis. There is a checkpoint system in the first growth phase. So if after mitosis, a cell is in G1, the first growth phase, it should act and operate like a normal cell. However, if something has happened to that cell, if it is not operating correctly, then it won't be able to check or pass this first checkpoint. If a cell is damaged or not operating correctly, then you do not want it to go into synthesis where you have to copy uh, your DNA. You don't want something that's damaged to go and create new DNA that could end up being damaged. So that's the G1 checkpoint. So if you pass the G1 checkpoint, the next checkpoint is at the end here of G2. So once you have, that cell has undergone synthesis, it has copied all of its DNA. So you have another checkpoint that will make sure that DNA um, reproduction was correct. So if, if you have a checkpoint here and it tells you that um, if your DNA synthesis, if something happened, if it's wrong or incorrect, um, you won't be able to pass this checkpoint. Also, if you get a signal, the cell needs a signal from the outside. Um, it can be from uh, a neighboring cell. It can be uh, another response from the body indicating that you need, you're now ready, you're now able to go into mitosis because 
you are needed to be uh, under their cell division. That is the G2 checkpoint. And then so once you pass the checkpoint, the cell will undergo mitosis. There is a mitotic checkpoint. Um, before the end of mitosis, if something has happened to the cells while they were undergoing mitosis, um, if there has been some sort of incorrect um, uh, cell division or damage to the cells um, during mitosis, then they, they, they won't pass the mitotic um, checkpoint. And so those cells would then um, die. If, if something goes wrong, you don't want them to then go into interphase here, growth, where then they can actually become something that they're not meant to be or become cancer cells. And generally, when you do have a cell that is able to undergo, um, when the checkpoint, when they're able to bypass the checkpoint here for mitosis and start to grow into, and go into the interphase, then those cells usually are um, cancer cells if they're not meant to pass this checkpoint. And so this here is just showing you how um, a growth factor will send a signal. Um, you can get a growth factor. It could be from a neighboring cell saying that they need the cell to uh, start to undergo um, synthesis or divide. Uh, an, a growth factor can be, there can be different kinds of growth factors. I can give you a very easy example of something. Say you have skin cells and you get a scratch or a cut on your skin, then your neighboring cells within your body will send out a growth factor, uh, a signal indicating that those cells near the wound area need to um, prepare for um, mitosis so that they can replace the cells that have been damaged or need to be replaced. So let's talk about cancer for a second here. Growing out of control produces cancer cells. And cancer cells, if not caught by the body, um, can divide excessively and form masses that we call tumors. Um, so you can have benign cancer um, and benign cancer is cancer that grows in a part of the body where it is not affecting tissue or organ function. However, benign tumors or, or benign cancer can become malignant. Malignant tumors will invade other tissues and start to affect normal body function. Um, so there is radiation and chemotherapy um, that is used to fight cancer. However, these treatments do interfere with normal cell division. So there is a reason why if someone is undergoing chemotherapy, there's a reason why it is not a fun experience. It is not, it's a very horrible experience because it affects not only the cancer, but the whole entire body. Um, these drugs and um, radiation are meant to stop cell division. One way to fight cancer, cancer cells are dividing out of control. So if you can stop the cancer from dividing, then you can stop it where the body can actually start to heal or um, you can actually have a chance to undergo surgery or some other form of um, therapy where you can actually try to beat the cancer cells. However, the problem with say chemotherapy is that it doesn't only affect the cancer, it affects all the other cells in your body as well, all the good cells too. So they get locked, they're not able to undergo cell division. And this affects the body's homeostasis and it affects the body's um, some normal functions in the body. But you know, that's, I think my personal opinion is that it is a, um, a an, an okay way of trying to treat or fight cancer, um, trying to give your body an actual fighting chance against uh, uncontrolled cell division. 
So a tumor can form, and you can see this here is um, an example of breast tissue, where the tumor can actually start to, uh, so you have a cancer cell uh, where it has bypassed or able to escape the um, control points, the checkpoints in the cell cycle. So something has gone wrong in one of those cells where it's now going to grow out of control. You, so you have a tumor form. That tumor will keep growing, right? So, so cancer in itself, you know, usually when it starts, it's not really, it's not, most people don't realize they have cancer um, or a mass until it becomes something that starts to invade uh, the surrounding tissue and affects normal body function. So this is a lump and then, you know, if you can catch it at this stage, that would be great. But then sometimes people may not know it and it can invade the surrounding tissue. Which at this stage, you would still try to fight uh, the cancer. Unfortunately, when cancer becomes so large or it's able to get into um, near the blood vessel system or the lymph um, vessels, uh, some of these cancer cells can break apart and travel through the bloodstream. And this is um, meta, um, metastasis where the cancer has metastasized and it can travel to different parts of the body. When cancer met metastasizes, it's the worst form of, um, in my opinion, cancer because you could have, say, cancer here in the breast, and then a part of it can travel in the blood vessel system to any part of the body. It can end up in a part of the body where it can start growing um, that doesn't really affect body function that much, or it can actually end up somewhere that can actually harm the body a lot. And so when cancer has started to metastasize in some individuals, uh, a lot of them are not able to um, um, fight it off as well unfortunately. 